Several months ago, we talked about how astronomers have been looking for an ancient kilonova which might have seeded our solar system with heavy elements like gold long before the planets ever formed. But now a new star called HD 100546 with a planet forming disk of dust containing methanol may change how scientists think new star systems get their organic molecules. We're going to talk about this star as well as the implications surrounding it. But first, be sure to hit that like button, comment down below, smash that subscribe button, and ring that bell to never miss a video. I'm Eric Malachite, author The Man Without Hands, and this is Science Get. We've observed a plethora of young stars surrounded by protoplanetary disks, and those disks will one day coalesce into protoplanets, gas giants, asteroids, comets, and potentially life-bearing, habitable, rocky worlds similar to our own. But at least in our own solar system, the Earth appears to be the only habitable planet where life both began and has thrived. Challenge accepted, nature. Cometary impacts are thought to be a solid explanation, get it, for how Earth got the majority of its liquid water. But the icy moons around Jupiter and Saturn have yielded environments that might potentially hold subsurface life. The presence of biologically significant molecules like glycine, methylamine, and ethylamine were all discovered in Comet 67P, and New Horizons revealed that the Kuiper Belt object KBO486598, or Orokoth, which is a badass name, has a surface rich in organic material including methanol. However, looking at exoplanetary systems as well as the organic compounds present in alien protoplanetary disks is providing new insights into how star systems get their organic compounds. Complex organic molecules bridge the gap in complexity between two and three atom molecules that we normally find in the vacuum of space. And these molecules seem to be universally abundant in the gases that surround forming stars. But it's been uncertain if this organic ice survives the development of the planetary disk. However, recent observations made by the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array, or ALMA, of cold gas formations around stars resulted in the detections of acetonitrite, methanol, and formic acid, all of which are key functional groups in organic chemistry. These observations show that complex molecules are present at the beginning of planet formation, but still do not provide any firm answers as to where they came from. But HD 100546, a star 320 light years away, as well as the planetary disk that surrounds it, may hold the answers. Methanol normally forms at low temperatures through the hydrogen of carbon monoxide in ice on the surface of icy dust grains. It's also necessary for the formation of amino acids, proteins, and consequently, life. The only trouble is, the star HD 100546, which has an abundance of complex organic molecules including methanol, has a temperature of about 9,700 degrees Celsius, which is way too hot for the methanol to have formed there recently. The protoplanetary disk is warm and is rich with gases, and there is actually mounting evidence to suggest that two giant planets have either formed from the disk or are in the process of forming. So the current theory is that the methanol must have originated from the stellar nebula that collapsed when forming the star, and then survived again when that nebula transitioned into becoming a protoplanetary disk, which is pretty amazing considering that it was previously thought that organic elements couldn't necessarily survive the process that leads to the formation of one of these planet-forming disks. But if this paper, published in Nature Astronomy on May 10th, is right, then this could mean that exoplanets start with all of the necessary building blocks for life from their very inception. Or in other words, they inherit their organic molecules. Complex organic compounds have been detected in interstellar and planetary nebula before this observation. However, astronomers didn't know whether organic material from interstellar space would have been able to survive the formation of the protoplanetary disk, or if the process of developing life-giving molecules would have had to have started from scratch. Alice Booth, an astronomer at Leiden University in the Netherlands, says, When you form a star in its disk, it's not a very easy breezy process. Radiation from the new star and shock waves in the imploding material could destroy a lot of the molecules that were originally in your initial cloud. Karen Odenberg, an astrochemist at Harvard University, says, 
This is the first evidence that the really interesting chemistry we see early on in star formation actually survives incorporation into the planet-forming disk. Astronomers should next search the disks around other young stars for methanol or other organic molecules to explore whether this is a one-time get-lucky kind of thing, or whether we can safely assume that planet-forming disks always inherit these kinds of molecules. But if exoplanetary systems are preloaded with life-bearing molecules, where are all the habitable planets at? I'm glad you asked. We've found more than 4,000 exoplanets so far, and there are quite a few candidates for systems that could have a habitable Earth-like world or two, one of them being Proxima Centauri. In fact, Proxima b is on the short list of potentially habitable worlds headed up by the Planetary Habitability Laboratory, or PHL, which I will call Phil for the rest of this video, because I can't, at the University of Puerto Rico at Arecibo. Rest in peace. According to Phil's list, standing tall with Proxima b is Tea Garden Star b, Toy 700d, K272e, Trappist-1d, Kepler-1649c, and about 30 or 40 others. Phil's list is based on various qualifiers, including temperature, composition, and whether or not life is more likely to form on the surface, Terran, or beneath the surface, Subterran. But many stars on this list feature exoplanets that orbit extremely close to their star, such as Proxima b, bringing into question whether or not those worlds could ever host life if they're tightly locked, like the Trappist-1 planets and Proxima b, potentially. And if they're being pelted with X-rays, like Proxima b, or being subjected to extreme tidal heating, like Trappist-1. While all that may sound extremely bad for the potential for habitable worlds, we have to remember that life is pretty resilient. And with a growing list of exoplanets around sun-like stars, like that study we reported on that suggests that the Milky Way is teeming with Earth-like planets around sun-like stars, things begin to look a bit brighter. But if this paper is right, and planetary systems are preloaded with these organic compounds from day one, then it improves our chances of finding a world that is just right, that is also in the Goldilocks zone. Ah. At the beginning of this video, we mentioned the video we did on an ancient kalanova that's thought to have seeded our solar system's protoplanetary disk with rare Earth metals. While it's still very likely that this happened, as there is a bunch of evidence for it, it's a good illustration of how scientists think exoplanetary systems got their organic molecules, if they had them at all, before this paper. Primarily, they were thinking of outside circumstances seeding them. But if we're not reliant on outside phenomena like supernovae or kilonovae or really any other cosmic event to explain these complex organic molecules, then the chances of having a habitable world goes way up. Which means that my chances of getting off this rock have just improved, provided I can find a way to extend my life indefinitely and wait out the inevitable destruction of the human race to take to the stars. In fact, here's a map of all the potentially habitable systems that we can see in our night sky. Thanks, Phil. Now, there is still a chance that none of these systems hold life, so it's a bit like Schrodinger's exoplanet. An exoplanet which is both habitable and uninhabitable simultaneously. But at least there's a chance. Just pretend I put a clip of Jim Carrey and Dumb and Dumber saying that one line. You know the one. YouTube's copyright bot is vicious. I'll even give you guys a moment to laugh. Thank you. If you dug this content, be sure to drop me a like and comment which worlds you think might be harboring life. And be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to never miss an episode of Science Get. Oh, look at those names. Thank you, patrons. Oh look, it's done. I'm Eric Malachi, and I'll see you next time.